In this video, we will review the key concepts and basic formulas introduced in the previous chapter. It's really important to note that our discussion of CVP analysis assumed that the company sells only one product. Most companies sell multiple products. If a company sells more than one product, break-even analysis is more complex than discussed at this point. In the next video, we will use the same basic equations. However, the contribution margin must be weighted by the sales mix. Let's first review some of those key concepts and formulas that you must understand before we tackle break-even for a company with multiple products. The CVP income statement classifies cost as variable or fixed and calculates a contribution margin. Contribution margin is the amount of revenue remaining after deducting variable cost. I like to think of it as the amount available to cover fixed cost as well as generate income. It is often stated both as a total amount and on a per unit basis. Companies often prepare detailed CVP income statements. This income statement provides more detailed information about the composition of the expenses. The term cost includes all costs and expenses related to production as well as the sale of the product. So both variable and fixed cost will include manufacturing cost as well as selling and administrative expenses. Before we introduce additional issues of CVP analysis, let's review some of the basic concepts you learned in the previous chapter, specifically break-even analysis, target net income, and margin of safety. Fargo's unit contribution margin is $200, and its contribution margin ratio is 40%. If we divide these two amounts into fixed cost, we'll get break-even point in units, as well as break-even point in dollars. Once a company achieves break-even point, it then sets a sales goal that will generate a target net income. Let's assume Vargas Management has a target net income of $250,000. In order for them to achieve this target net income, they will need to sell 2,250 units. We can use the contribution margin ratio to compute the required sales in dollars. In order to achieve net income of $250,000, Fargo has to sell 2,250 camcorders for a total price of $1,125,000. Another ma measure managers use to assess profitability is the margin of safety. The margin of safety tells us how far sales can drop before the company will be operating at a loss. Managers like to have a sense of how much cushion they have between their current situation and operating at a loss. This can be expressed as a dollar or as a ratio. For example, Fargo reported sales of $800,000. At that level of sales, its margin of safety is $300 or $300,000. So Vargo sales could drop by $300,000 before the company would operate at a loss. We can also calculate the margin of safety as a ratio. You simply take that margin of safety in dollars and divide by the expected or actual sales. Right? So in this instance, Vargo sales can drop by $300,000 or by 37.5% before the company would operate at a loss. To better understand how CVP analysis works, let's look at three independent situations that might occur at Vargo. Each case uses the original cell phone sales as well as cost data. Let's take a look at our first scenario. We have a competitor offering a 10% discount on the selling price of its cell phones. Management must decide whether to offer a similar discount. We need to determine what the effect of a 10% discount on the selling price will have on the break-even point. A 10% discount 
on the selling price reduces the unit contribution margin from $200 to $150. Assuming no change in fixed cost, break-even sales are 1,333 units. Reducing the selling price by 10% requires monthly sales to increase by 333 units in order to break even. In our next scenario, we have management investing in a new robotic equipment that will lower the amount of direct labor required to make the cell phones. They estimate that total fixed cost will increase by 30% but the variable cost per unit will decrease by 30%. We need to determine what effect the new equipment will have on the sales volume required to break even. All right, so let's focus on our total fixed cost. And again, they're going to increase by 30% or $260,000. The, the variable cost per unit becomes $210. Again, we're going to decrease that by 30% which means our unit contribution margin is $290. The new break-even point is approximately 897 units. The break-even point is reduced by approximately 10% or 100 units. So these changes appear to be advantageous. In this last scenario, we have our variable cost increasing by $25. Our selling price will remain the same and our fixed cost will be reduced by 17,500. At this level of activity, right, Vargo is generating $80,000 of income. In this last scenario, the variable cost per unit increases to $325. Fixed costs are reduced to 182,500. Because of the change in variable cost, the unit contribution margin becomes $175. To achieve a target net income of $80,000, Vargo must sell 1,500 cell phones, which is an increase of 100 units. This exercise is similar to what we've been doing. Um, the only thing I want to point out here is in this scenario, we're increasing selling price by 10%, but there's no change in total variable cost, which is similar to this first scenario that we looked at. When you are doing your homework for question number three, if sales volume increases or decreases, you must also increase or decrease variable cost. And lastly, I just want to conclude that I hope uh, the concepts we reviewed in this section are now very familiar to you. After you complete this exercise, we'll examine additional ways that companies use CVP analysis to assess profitability and to help in making effective business decisions.